Well, praise God, but well, welcome to Wednesday night service. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are glad to be in the house of God? I'm going to ask you one time. How many of y'all are glad to be in the house of God? Hallelujah. Well, I apologize for our late start, but I don't apologize why. Lord just met us in our prayer meeting, and, and uh, we couldn't stop. And we were moving in prayer, believing God has this evening in hand. I believe that God's going to say something uh, to everyone that is in this building or viewing online tonight. I believe that every every one of us that are seeing and taking part in this, even if it's later on, uh, down in, in, in the course of time, the next day or whatever you may be viewing this, I believe this is a significant time and God has proved that in, in this prayer meeting tonight. And so, uh, uh, and maybe only I know that because I know where we're headed tonight. But, but I want to tell you that God, uh, God is faithful. He has something to say to us tonight. So, how many of y'all receive what God has to say to us? Hallelujah! 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 Well, I'm praying for the service. Let's agree tonight that God will just be glorified in all that's done. Father, we just thank you tonight. We praise you, Lord, that God, we have the opportunity to gather here together and to hear from you in your heart. Lord, thank you that you love us so much. God, we just pray in the name of Jesus that you may glorify tonight. We be anointed to worship you. And that, Father, every one of our hearts, ears, and eyes will be open to receive what, Lord, the Spirit is saying to the church, to what the Spirit is saying to every individual tonight. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it. We give you glory because yeah. you're so good in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Look at somebody's call and we say, God, still good in me. Yeah. 
and I thank you and I recognize you for it. So I give this small portion of what I have. Lord, I give with a cheerful heart and with excitement, knowing that as I plant this seed in the house of God and in the kingdom of God, it will be watered, it, you will shine upon it, and in due season, you will bring forth a great harvest in this house, the kingdom, and my house. Thank you, Lord, for using what I have in my hand and placing it in yours. Thank you for receiving it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on and give that anointed seed tonight. May God richly bless you for what you're doing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are who you say you are. Hallelujah. You do what you say you do. You are always saying hallelujah. Your promises are true. You are who you say you are. You do what you say you do. You are always faithful. Your promises are true. You are who you say you are. You do what you say you do. You are always faithful. Your promises are true. You are who you say you are. You do what you say you do. You are always faithful. Your promises are true. You are who you say you are. You do what you say you do. You are always faithful. Your promises are true. You are who you say you are. And you do what you say you do. You are always faithful. Your promises are true. Listen to the words I've heard time 
time and time again. The preacher spoke of sinful lives, it seems he spoke of mine. But I'll just wait, I've got plenty of time. I walked on down last pathway, living as I wish to live. Another fellow out to get what life could give. Making money isn't sinful. Having fun is not a crime. So I'll just wait. I've got plenty of time. Plenty of time to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
It says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Now let me just stop right here and just say this. If you read all the previous verses in Matthew 24, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what, are the, what is the sign of the end and the, the signs of, 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 of the, the end of time? And he began to give all the uh, uh, descriptions. And we could go into that tonight and every one of us could verify that those are signs that we begin seeing already to happen in our world. Amen? So the signs of the end, wars, rumors of wars, uh, 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 all kinds of things, uh, earthquakes in divers places, all kinds of things uh, uh, going on. And so, but this particular two verses that we just read, it says, look at the, the, uh, the, the fig tree. The fig tree, I want you to know, represents Israel. And when we look at what is going on with Israel, we're supposed to pay attention because as it goes with Israel, so it goes with the world. Amen? And what's going on with Israel right now should be telling us that the season is about to change. That the coming of the Lord is nigh at hand. So the Bible's telling us here that to pay attention to what's going on and what Jesus is telling them to watch for. And when you see these things, and another gospel says, when you see these things begin to take place, says, look up, because your redemption draweth nigh. Amen? So let's read on here. It says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. What's he talking about? These generations that begin to see these things. We're in a generation that has begun to see all the unfolding that the Lord had predicted about the end times. Amen? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Hallelujah. Read that last verse with me. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth doth come. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for loving us so much that, Father God, you would you would use this, this moment in time to reach out, God, to those that are reaching out to you. God, to, to challenge mindsets, to, to challenge a, a living situations. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, what's, what's spoken tonight, the truth that's spoken tonight, I pray, God, it is my desire, God, as much as lies within me to speak it in love. And I, you said speak the truth in love. Father, I pray that, Lord, everyone that hears this tonight would realize this is the plea of a loving Father. Not me, but you, Father God. And so, Lord, as your word comes forth tonight, I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, you're expressing your love and your care. And you're saying, be aware, open your eyes, watch. Because you don't know what day it is. And Lord, you're saying that, to, that now, now is the time. There is not plenty of time anymore. But God, now is the time to look up because our redemption draws nigh. Father, let us heed the words that we read tonight. Let us heed the voice of the Spirit that would speak to us in our hearts tonight. And we'll receive this. And we receive it to our good and for our comfort. In Jesus' name, and everybody that agrees says, Amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Back up just a little bit to, to verse 36. And I want to tell you, I want to just tell you real quickly uh, how the Word of God designs the end times. Uh, if you don't know, is that, that uh, all the prophecy uh, that it was spoken before Jesus' time, hundreds of years, came to pass when Jesus came to earth. He was that lamb of sacrifice. There are prophetic words in the Word that prove the Word of God over and over. There's a prophetic calendar 
uh, set for Israel. Amen. And in the prophets, I ain't got time to go into all this tonight. But there are uh, there were like 483 years between the time that the, the, the walls of Jerusalem fell until the time when Messiah was cut off. That's talking about the crucifixion of Jesus. Amen? And guess what? It was exactly 483 years for that to happen. When you add all the years up that is prophesied in Daniel, uh, you know, may know it as Daniel's 70th week, and, and uh, the seven sets of 70 years, which is 490 years. And you take all the years assigned to Israel, and you, you can bring it to uh, 483, seven years are missing. Why? Because when Jesus came and was resurrected, there became a, a beginning of what we know as the church age, the, ch the age of grace, where Jesus is reaching out to the Gentiles and the whole world. There was a stop to the Jewish calendar, so to speak, spiritually. Amen. But there's still seven years left. Amen. Well, the Bible goes on to tell us, and, and uh, uh, I wish I had time to do and we may do a full blown revelation study again. I think I'm really feeling I need to do that here pretty quick. But, but let me tell you that there's seven years remaining and that seven years will be the last seven years of the tribulation where Jesus is dealing with the Jews again and where the Jews will realize that they have, uh, they have pierced the Holy Son of God and, and they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of that seven years when all you know what's breaking loose on earth. Jesus is going to come down when Israel is about to be destroyed and he's going to spread to save them and he's going to take over the throne of his father David and rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. But listen, we're in the church age right now. We're in an age of grace where Jesus is reaching out, compelling men by his spirit and his kindness. Saying, come on, whoever will, I compel you, whoever will receive me, come and receive me. Because the end is drawing near. And the next event on the calendar is the rapture of the church. Amen? You go over to 1 Thessalonians. I didn't plan on going there. Let's just go there. Don't you need to see it in the Bible. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, or in other words, have died already, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then which also would sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ, the dead in Christ, everybody say the dead in Christ. Yeah shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah. That's the description of the rapture of the church. Now you can debate all, all day and many people say, well, I believe Jesus gives the middle tribulation, the end of tribulation. All over the word of God, Jesus gives the example. God gives us the example that we have not been assigned to wrath. Amen? But to be taken away. He, in fact, Jesus said, pray that you may escape all these things that will come upon the earth. Amen? And, and right here, let me see if I can, I can find it. Yes, over here in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, look at verse 9. Oh, let's just go back to verse 1. Uh, there's too much good stuff here. Go back to verse 1 in chapter 5. It says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the, the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. But when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon all them as travail upon a woman with a child. And they shall not escape. But ye, everybody say, I'm a ye, not they. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. And I want to tell you something right now. What has is, what is impressed me to share this tonight is the Lord has impressed me to say, within the confines of the labeled word church, there's a lot of sleeping going on. Amen. It's time that the church wake up yes. and be the church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch 
and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. You see that? God hath not appointed us to wrath. There is a time coming after the, rest, after the rapture of the church, a seven-year period when the Antichrist will come. He, is a, he will eventually be an incarnate of Satan. He will come to rule this world. He'll be Satan's puppet. And then Satan himself will actually possess him midway through this thing totally and uh, uh, will try to rule the world. That's what Satan's always wanted to do, be in charge. Amen. But I want to tell you, it will be a time the Bible describes as the time of Jacob's trouble, which is Israel. It describes it as, as the time of the wrath of God. And you and I have not been uh, have not been assigned to the wrath of God. Let me uh, just encourage you. If you know Jesus, then live for Jesus. Yes. Amen. It's a time to get our life right. If there's any areas that you question or you're, or you're dealing with, it's a time to get things right with God. And you can. I'll show you that in the scripture in a little bit. You can no matter what it is, no matter what, it, no, what a hold it has on you. It's time right now to get it right. Because Jesus can come at any moment, at any time. And when he comes, tribulation time will kick in. Seven years of tribulation like the world has never seen. The last three and a half years are called the great tribulation. But I want to tell you, you know Jesus and are living for Jesus. Amen. You are not assigned to that time. Jesus is going to get his church out of here. His true church. Everybody say his true church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The time is now to let the Holy Spirit speak to our heart and lead us into that walk that we need to have with him. Now hear me. I, I keep uh, Because of the generation we live in and because of the things that have been preached throughout the church. When I preach a message like this, I keep finding myself having to halt and explain why I'm saying this. And I have to halt right here and say, why do I have to explain this? It's because there's been so much wrong teaching about, I'm not talking about works. I'm not talking about, about uh, getting heaven by your works. Right. I'm talking about getting saved by the grace of God. And because you're in love with Jesus, every one of your works by your own doing, come in, in, into the fire of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God, and you say in your heart, God, burn up everything that is not of you, that all that is left is a pursuit of you. Amen? That's where we need to be as the church. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's where we need to be. We need to be serious about living for God. And everything, let me tell you what, your, your weakness, God can help you with your weakness. God is stronger than your weakness. Amen? But if you believe that the Word of God is true, then it is a time to apply the Word of God to our lives like never before. Why? Because we're running out of time. Jesus is coming back, and He's coming back soon. And I, why am I preaching this? Is to say, oh, you're a sinner, and I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm saying God loves you so much. He's pleading. He's, he's using His preachers and, and His believers, his sons and daughters to plead and say, please get right with God. Because he can come Amen. 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 His word declares his word declares what we need to do. How we know. Amen. We we'll know them by their fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get serious about living for God. And there is nothing that the Lord Jesus Christ cannot help you overcome. Amen. Hallelujah. I've known good men, good, strong men. You can talk to them about God and eyes and just water because they, they love God, but they had, they had a, a, a stronghold of alcohol. Let me, let me tell you what. God can break that. God can break that. And let me tell you what. God is a God of the, of the heart. I'm getting way ahead of my message, but you know what? When I believe when Jesus comes back, he's going to look at, at, at the placement of the heart of every believer. He's going he's to know those who are trying to, to rake their weaknesses under the rug and exist with them. And he knows them that are trying to defeat that thing. Yes. And has got a stronghold on them. And if they will keep fighting. See, this is a fight of faith. If they will keep fighting, there will arrive a day when that thing does not have a stronghold over them anymore, but they will be free. 
because Jesus wants them free because every time they fall, then the enemy shows up on their shoulder telling them how sorry they are and that they'll never be any good to God and trying to get them to give up. Yes. To give up the what? Fight. Because this is a fight of faith. I'm appealing to you tonight as a, in a war room and I'm saying... Be a part. This is a fight. You've got to just realize it. You're going to be fighting something, whether it's God or whether it's the devil. Right. And if you're trying to bring your world into acceptance to God, I'm telling you, you're fighting against the Holy Ghost. But tonight, I want you to determine that you're going to change sides and you're going to fight against the enemy and declare what God declared, that we can be free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How, we've got to deal with our life. Deal with our sin. You say, we're, we're in church on Wednesday night. You're preaching about sin. Let me tell you what, there's a lot more listening than you, you guys that are sitting right here tonight. And you know what? I found out something. That the church needs a lot of adjustments in these days. Amen? I don't sit here as, as an all-knowing source that knows everything going on in your life between you and God. I don't know that. I don't know that. But I know where I've been throughout my Christian walk. And I know what I've had to deal with and overcome throughout my Christian walk. I know where I was when I was lost trying to convince myself that everything was all right. right. Amen? Amen? Until I opened my ears up to the fullness and trueness of what God was telling me. And I truly repented. And I realized, you see, this is what you got to realize. The closer you get to God, you find out how much like Him you're not. Isn't that the truth? Amen. 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 That's when you know God's really talking to you because He keeps revealing to you. And it makes you more humble and more humble and more humble because you, you're, you're realizing, oh God, oh God, I'm not you. And how God does it, I don't know, but at the same time that there's, there's new humility that He brings to our hearts, there's also a new awareness of our identity in Him. That we rise up toward God. It's like, God, Oh, God, I got nothing to offer you. I'm nothing without you. I, the more I learn about you, the more I realize how much I'm nothing without you. And then, But at the same time, he raises up a boldness against us. And when we face the enemy, it's like, I am in Christ Jesus. And it doesn't matter. So you're under his feet, so you're under my feet in the name of Jesus. So I take authority. No power of hell has dominion over me. And it's amazing how humility and boldness can be growing at the same time. Amen. That's what I'm talking about tonight. Calling, looking at ourselves and calling it what it is boldly. Saying it's, it's, it's past time. There's not enough time for me to weep in sin. Let me tell you something. God never has weeped in sin. Listen to what I'm about to say. God does not weep in sin because of the blood of Jesus. He erases sin. And that's why you're able to go to heaven. It has to be dealt with and erased. Before you enter into heaven. Amen. Now, I heard a friend preaching the other night. The Lord Lane in, in Buffalo. Lord if you're watching. God bless you. Thank you for speaking the truth brother. But I heard him say this. Say, you know when you first get saved. It says you know. Can, over in 1 John it says. If you sin confess your sin. Uh, you know that he's faithful to just forgive your sin. Now that. You got to understand. That letter was written to Christians. Amen. How many of y'all know when you first got saved. God didn't expect you to sit there and. Confess every sin you've ever done. If that was the case, we'd all still be in line trying to remember everything we've done. How many of y'all know when we get saved, the blood of Jesus wipes away every sin that we've ever done to that point. But then something happens. We have the Holy Ghost inside of us that convicts us of sin. And so we become responsible then that when we drop the ball, we should confess our sin to receive that forgiveness and that covering and that new beginning again so that we can continually walk in the way that God would have us to walk. Yes. Anybody hearing me tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. That's the church Jesus is coming for. Not the church that's trying to make their way okay, but trying to make our way Turn into what His way is. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't, I said it so many times, we don't form the Word around us. We form according to, we are the clay on the, 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 the potter's wheel. Amen. Yeah. We're not the hands and the Word is not the clay. We've got it backwards. <laughs> well, but the, 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 uh, the society and the, the uh, all the, the elders of our denomination have decided 
that this is okay. That he just, you know what? If it doesn't line up with this word, you need to do something with your elders. Amen. You need to do something with your governing body. And I'm telling you what, the church is embracing things now that the word of God directly, directly, directly says is not of righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Receive the Lord. It, it's important that we deal with these things and not just assume that, that uh, God understands. Y'all know how much I love that, uh, that statement around here. God understands. Uh, but He understands that He gave His Son. He gave the blood of His Son spilled out upon this earth. And He gave everything so that we could receive the power of that blood and receive the forgiveness of our sins and the shift in our life so that we might become one who walks after the, the Spirit and not after the church. Amen. That's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you right now, if you look at the uh, at the, the course of things, so I read that scripture that says, you remember we just read in Matthew 24, in fact, go back over there, we're going to read a little more there, but it, I believe that the earth is not just experiencing uh, just little, little telltale signs of His coming. The Bible says that, that you can compare it as when a woman is in, in travail of labor, and I want to tell you that, that I believe that here recently, particularly in 2020, we have kicked into full-blown labor pains. Amen. And Jesus' return is about to come forth. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all know that women that you've had a baby, how many of y'all know that just uh, light contractions are not like true labor pains? Yes. I believe we have kicked into labor pains. And how many of y'all know, ladies, that you usually don't give birth with one labor pain? No. You, let me tell you, I'm not, the, I'm not trying to prophesy bad news, but if you think COVID-19 is the end of the world, this is the first labor, real labor pain we've experienced. Amen? Amen? But guess what? For the church of Jesus Christ, we may go through some stuff. Let me tell you, we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared to take a stand. We need to be prepared to stand for Jesus or not. Amen. Because I believe there may be more persecution of the church coming forward. I don't know how long God will let this continue on. I don't know how far it will go. But I'm saying we better be ready to endure until the end. Hallelujah. Amen. And if we approach it that way and say, God, I am holding to you. I will live for you no matter what. This is what my call, this is what my purpose is. I want to tell you that for us, that baby will be birthed as the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what was a painful experience, it seemed, go through an uncomfortable time, will we'll turn into rejoicing, hallelujah, as we see the Son of Man face to face. Hallelujah, we see Jesus. And I want to tell you, whatever we have to go through here on this side, when we see Jesus face to face, it will be worth it all. Amen. Hallelujah. I heard, heard uh, man, I tell you, if any of y'all get a chance, I don't know if they'll rebroadcast it again, but uh, how many of y'all know who Jimmy Evans is? He's a minister that ministers on, on marriage a lot. And uh, 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 and this is totally out of character for him. He just wrote a book called uh, 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 Tipping Point, talking about the end times. He was being interviewed, I believe it was on, on TBN, but he said this, and I totally agree, and, and many of you, particularly young people, are going to relate to this. But, you know, many say, well, I don't want Jesus to come back yet because I want to get married. I want to have children. And, and uh, you know what? I understand that. I understand that, and that's a that's a pure right desire. But let me just comfort you a little bit. If Jesus comes before I have, I guarantee, first time his eyes hit yours. Oh my God! You won't even give that stuff another thought because all the ecstasy and and. Uh, High living and, and joy that anything Amen. on earth can give us. Amen. The moment we step into glory, it will be that magnified thousands of times over. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we have to look forward to. Hallelujah. The things of earth will grow strangely dim. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't have those desires. Don't go ahead desire those things. The Bible says you ought to go keep living. Amen. Amen. Keep living. That don't mean because we believe Jesus is coming soon. That don't mean we just quit work. Go home. Don't worry about it. Jesus 
you don't need to. No, you continue. I heard one man say it like this. I, I, agree, I, I agree with this. That we ought to plan like Jesus is coming 50 years from now. We ought to live like Jesus is coming today. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and plan your life. Get your insurance. Be prepared. Take care of your family. Because we just read a while ago. We don't know the day and the hour of his return. Amen. Only the Father does. Amen. So we don't know. So plan ahead. But live right now like he could come at any moment. That's why we're saying, and you know what? Our love has been fulfilled. But we're not telling you that Jesus could come at any moment. And it will be, this is a description of the rapture of church in Matthew 24, where it says, two shall be in the field. One shall be taken, one shall be left. Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken, one shall be left. I heard reports some people were telling me they're got all these UFO sightings. They're now coming up with and I think what Jacob said, well, I told the he said, he said, well, man, that's just, they're getting ready to explain the rapture away. Yeah. Absolutely. When the rapture happens and, and all these people, believers disappear, oh, it's going to be a UFO that came and kidnapped all these people. Amen? And let me tell you what, they've been in deception and denial so much over Jesus Christ, they're going to just, oh, that's what it is. Somebody delivers from the aliens, and guess who? Somebody will step up and say, I've got a plan. He will be the Antichrist. And the world will follow after him. Amen. I'm thankful that Jesus did not leave us in the dark. The truth is revealed to us. We know the leaves are changing on the trees. And we know the season is here. That Jesus could come at any moment, plenty of time. I don't think so. Amen. I got five points and I'm in the middle of point one. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Hallelujah. Can you give me a few more minutes? Hallelujah. Can I have a few more minutes? Amen. Okay with that? We started late anyway, right? Hallelujah. Listen, listen. COVID-19 is just a birth pain. I'm not trying to diminish it, but it's a birth pain. If Jesus tarries, there will be more coming. But as the church, we need to stand strong and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He will deliver us from all our distresses. Would somebody say amen and amen? Now, this is the scary part. If there's a scary part, and I'm not a preacher of fear, but if there's anything the church ought to be real leery of, it's this. First, let me read the rest of Matthew 24, then I'm going to read a little bit of 25. But this note, verse 43, that if the good man of the house had known what I watched the thief would have come, he would have watched and will not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man come. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made him ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. <laughs> Bear I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. i got plenty of time. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Did you notice that he said there were good servants and evil servants. Both were supposed to supposedly serving him. Now here's where it gets the nitty gritty. Chapter 25. Jesus gives a parable here. He says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And the wise took all with their vessels, with their lamps, in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of, our, of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us in you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. 
And they that were ready, everybody say ready, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open us. And he answered and said, Verily I say to you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. I just want to throw this thought out to you. It's a sad thought. Here is ten virgins, bridegrooms, waiting for a bri or brides, waiting for the call of the bridegroom. They were preparing to meet him. Isn't the church supposed to be the bride of Christ? Amen. But God, Jesus, was so open to give us the account of this, to let us know that even those that think they're the bride, some of them are not. If you look at it percentage-wise, y'all, you look at that, and I would venture to say this, that this parable is a direct comparison to who's going to make the rapture and who's not. All those who are calling themselves in the church world, 50% maybe. What am I talking about tonight? I'm talking about being serious to live for God. I'm talking about being ready for Him. I'm talking about cutting the foolishness out of our lives and realizing when God proclaims something, we need to stick with it. Amen? The Bible says that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Our kids are bound with it. That's why we have to continually spank them while they're growing up to correct them and get them in the proper way. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to tell you that if without Christ, we're in foolishness. Amen? And we need to find... The problem is men are trying to find themselves in themselves. Real, real quickly, go over Proverbs 18. I'm not going to hold you too much longer. Are y'all with me? Y'all yeah. getting anything out of it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, verses 1 and 2. Look here what it says. It says, Through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. When a man separates himself and does not allow his mind to be meddled with wisdom. Amen? Now here's where it really tells where, where this person is going. Verse 2. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. How many of y'all have ever had somebody tell you, I've just got to find myself? Y'all ever heard that before? What are you? What are you doing? What in the world are you, you acting? What are you living like? I just, I just, well, that's, I just got to find who I am. I just, well, congratulations! You have just admitted what you are, and I ain't calling no man a fool. Let the Bible say it. Amen. Verse two. Because let me tell you what: the only way you can discover your true identity is let God define you. Yes. Amen. If you're trying to define yourself, then that means you're defining yourself by every craving that comes up within you. And how many of y'all know every craving that comes up within you is not good? That's why God said, crucify the flesh and the desires, the affections, and the lust thereof. Would somebody say amen? amen. And we could go to 1 Corinthians, I won't for time, but 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 through 13, or, or uh, Romans chapter 1, and it gives us the example of the children of Israel. And how they came out, God delivered them, brought them across the Red Sea, experienced the miracle working power of God over and over. And yet, when Moses, their leader, disappeared a little while, they, they just, they built idols, they, they, got in, they got into all kind of sin, sexual sin, 23,000 of them fell in one day. I mean, and, and uh, perverse things going on in the camp. And I'm telling you, it happened. Why? Because they got to looking at themselves instead of looking at God. God, God, God. That bug revisited. Amen? It's time to get serious about the things of God. It's time to be ready for His coming when somebody say amen. amen. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the society we live in where, hey, it's okay to go get drunk with my friends. I'm going to go to church on Sunday and I'm going to praise the Lord and say hallelujah and say hallelujah and, and great in the name of the Lord, but you're going to see me out partying and getting drunk with my friends. Or somebody's going to go to prayer meetings and tell how God, God ministered in their prayer meetings and then you, you get on Facebook and it's F this, F that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's time to get real, y'all. Amen? 
This is why I say this is a plea to the world and to the church. If Jesus gave us an example of the virgins, about who would really be ready, then that tells me about 50% of the church is truly living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it all comes down is, will we let this be our guiding force or not? Will we believe what the Word of God says? Or will our own desires lead our life? Yes. We've got to draw a line, y'all. We've got to take a stand, amen, and be what God has called us to be. Why do we preach this? Like I say, it's not to say you're a sinner and I'm not. It's to say that we love those that are lost. We love the backslidden because we want to do what Jesus did. What did Jesus come for? He came to seek and to save them which were lost. Amen? You know what? I don't know if you may have turned me off. You may be listening to me online and turn me off because you think I'm just sitting up here in my soapbox talking about sin. And I want to tell you something. If, if we truly are in love with Jesus, we'll let God deal with our sin. Yes. We'll let the blood of Jesus do the work to us to change us and make us a new person. And let me tell you, I don't want any... I mean, I don't want anybody that's going to my church not to make it should the rapture take place, the trumpet blow in our lifetime, and I surely believe it's going to happen. And I want every one of you guys to make it. So I'm pleading to you, I'm pleading to all you that are, that are watching tonight to make things right with God. The Bible says it like this. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You don't know if you've got plenty of time or not. Amen? As far as it's coming, you have plenty of time? I don't think so. I believe the coming of the Lord Jesus is right around the corner. So isn't it time now to let God have every place in our heart and mind? Cry out for his help. Amen? And he'll secure you. You know how I know he can secure you? Because the Bible says that he's faithful. Amen. Amen. He's faithful. He said to secure those who are tempted. He says that with every temptation, he has made a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. If something in our lives seems like it has us locked down in our mindset or our activities, and you know in your heart that's you either know in your heart it's not pleasing to God, or you're debating about it. And that's an area that we need to submit to God. Yes. Amen? Yes. And it's an area we need to say to God, take this thing and apply your escape route for me. Because God said, with every temptation, he makes a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. There is nothing too hard for you. God makes the way. It's just that we will give in to the voice of God power of God to put us in the right place. Amen. And I hope you're not sitting there as a part of the church tonight saying, well, I'm glad he's preaching it for so-and-so. <laughs> this is a message for every one of us. Amen. Every one of us. Paul said it like this, I die daily. We need to put ourselves on the altar every day and get closer to God. Because Jesus coming back to a church that is glorious without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but holy and without blemish and the only way that human flesh can ever enter into heaven is that we apply every inch of our life, let it be saturated by the blood of Jesus and let God change it by his mighty hand. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all want to be ready how many of y'all want to be one of those virgins that have plenty of oil? Amen. Got spare oil. Amen. Plenty of the, the oomph of God, the Holy Ghost of God, the oil, the anointing of the Spirit. Amen. He can wait to the last minute. Man, I, I, in Jesus' name, God, let there be no disappointed people from our church when that, when that rapture happens. Let there be no disappointed people in our family. God, let there be no, no disappointed people when that trumpet blows that they wondered, thought they was right, but realized they weren't. Holy Ghost couldn't get through. 
They wouldn't allow him to convict them before Jesus, but all the way till later that trumpet cord sound. All of a sudden, oh, they're going to be open. And they're going to know. God, if I own, if I own this, now, today, is the time. Let's make things right with God. Would y'all say amen? Amen. I want you to stand with me for just a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray first of all. I'm going to have a time of prayer with you that are here tonight. Just a moment before we leave. But before I'm going to pray for everybody that is watching online tonight. And I believe that God has strictly placed you there for a purpose. And to hear this message. And I don't know what the situations of your life are. I know that I know this. I know that, that those that, that do not make the rapture, those that, that do not make the cut are those that are either in ignorance they didn't know or those that are in rebellion that know and they just do, do things their own way or those that have been deceived by the enemy and thinking they are right. I don't want any of those reasons to be the reason why we miss the rapture of the church. Jesus came so that you can be saved. And we're going to agree for you, whoever you are tonight, that God would touch you and speak to you. You would open up your heart no matter what you're going through in your life. I don't care whether you're a drug addict, whether you're involved in, in rebellious living, whether you're, you're hooked on drugs or in a crime, family, whether you're in an alternative lifestyle or whatever's going on. I want to tell you tonight that God loves you and He has all you need to help you come in and be a part of the body of Christ. You may have known the Lord and, and you know you're not living right with Him and you need to get back with Him. I want to tell you, tonight's the night. Today's the day. Today's the day. If Jesus could come tonight. Yes. So we in this body, we're going to pray with you tonight. We're going to believe that God is going to, going to meet you right where you are. It's in the living room, in the car, in the workplace, you're watching this. I want to tell you, God's there with you by His Holy Spirit. And I believe as we pray tonight together, if you'll pray with us and receive what the Spirit of God has spoke to you tonight, God can reach down, change your life, save you, cleanse you, set you on a new path, and put a hunger in you to know Him and, and fulfill the very purpose that God set you on this earth, the purpose He put you here for. So if you will, would you pray that you tonight? Pray, make Jesus the Lord of your life. Pray with me, come back to the Lord if that's you. Can we all just pray this prayer out loud tonight with these that watch us right now? Say this with me, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you told us in your word what was going to happen. These days that we live in, we don't understand, but we understand by your word that these things are going to happen. Jesus, you are the one who brings stability to life no matter what. Jesus, I need you. I recognize you are Lord. You are the only way to the Father. So I confess you right now. Jesus, you are Lord. And I ask you, come into my heart fresh and new. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me by your blood. Make me new. And Lord, I receive you as Lord and Savior, my boss, my leader, my guide tonight. Thank you, Lord, for making a difference in my life and for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. And listen, if you prayed that prayer and you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life or, or dedicated your life, rededicated him, you come, you come be with us if you can. If you're anywhere near Lake O area here in China Spring, Rock Creek area, come to Rock Creek Church. If not, get you a Bible. Start reading the Word of God. Just, yeah, it's a little bit of day. One scripture a day. Start reading the New Testament and find your Bible-believing, Spirit-led church that will help you grow in the Lord. And I'll tell you what, God will fulfill what He's called you to do the reason He's put you here. God bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Hallelujah.